Robin. So, yun, good afternoon, teachers. So, this afternoon, yung ishare ko sa inyo is the tips on how to get a perfect score during the demonstration and deep it ranking. So, di ba? Malaking points din yung sa demonstration, right? If I'm not mistaken, it's 15. 15 points. So, knowing the fact that during the ranking or deep it ranking, we need to get the 70 points above 70 points is the cutoff score in order for you to be qualified or to the what they call the RQA or registry qualified applicant so demonstration is a very big matter it's a very big help to the to your deep ed ranking why because demonstration consists of 15 points as what I said earlier so he, now what i'm going to do is to share the tips on how to get a perfect points or get a 15 points during your demo teaching in vivid from so here here is the official copy of my lesson plan when i joined the deep in drunking 2020 i actually i graduated 2019 and I top the licensure examination for teachers 2019 also and I passed the licensure examination for teachers 2019 and then there is a different ranking has a schedule that is why I joined the 2020 ranking so what I did the here this what this folder that I'm this folder is the copy is the copy of uh, my lesson plan the lesson plan that I used during my deep in ranking and I got a highest score or a perfect score further which is 15 points so paano nga ba makakakuha ng perfect points sa demo, demo teaching, right? Demo teaching is very important to us, to us, the teachers, right? Because it's our way on how to teach or how to deliver or communicate the lesson towards our students. Here, here's the copy. So, this one, yan. So, front, in front of the folder, what you need to put is the required front page in your division office. Division office has uh, different requirements or a style, right? A style. So, here, no, what you're going to write in front is to, is the Republic the heading is the Republic of the Philippines, Department of Education, Regional Office, in what region you belong, and then what division, your division office, and then the address of your division office. And then, at the middle, you'll put lesson plan, your name, under that is your name, and then under your name, you need to put teacher applicant. So here. Here is the folder. Here, I'll flash the my lesson plan letter in the screen. Here, so my lesson plan consists of how many pages? Let me count this. <coughs> so my lesson plan consists of let's count this. How many pages? It one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. It. So my lesson plan consists of seven pages. The first thing in making a lesson plan for your for as a preparation for your demo drawing, 
is the first thing that you need to select or to think is what subject you're going to demo. You need to select the subject or you need to select the subject wherein you you think you are the best at. Right? So in my case, well, I'm not saying that I'm a mathematician or I'm good at mathematics, but during my time, during the, uh, during my time in Dipid Ranking, I prepare the math subject. Why? Because I just felt that I want this subject. I want to teach math during my Dipid Ranking. So, I choose math. Here. Yeah. So, since... Since I am an elementary teacher, I choose... I choose grade 3. It's up to you on what grade you're going to demo. It's up to you to choose the subject, the year, grade level. So, in my time, I choose... Math subject in grade 3. And also, the next thing that you need to do is to choose also if what subject you're going. Um, topic rather. So, in my time, the topic that I use in my demonstration is... Solve routine and non-routine problems. Routine and non-routine problems involving capacity measure. So, here's my topic. Lesson 83. Lesson 83. Routine and non-routine problems involving capacity measures. So, that is the topic that I've used during my deep ed ranking year 2020. So, if you already choose what kind of sub what subject what grade level the topic the the next thing that you need to do is to think of the appropriate appropriate objectives objectives consist of as we all know during our practice teaching we are advised or we are required to make three objectives. But during deep in ranking, it is it's okay for you to put one objective. Why? As long as your objective wrap up all. Right? So in my case, I only choose one objective, but make sure that it'll, it already wrap up everything. And it's precise, accurate. Right. So, here is my objective. I'll, I'll read my objective in order for you to have an idea. Letter A. My objective is solve routine and non-routine problems involving capacity measure. Objective is very important. Kailangan na kailangan na pag-isipan nyo ng mabuti yung objective na ilalagay nyo. At kailangan mamit nyo yan during your demo teachings. Bakit? Titingnan yan ng mag-rate kung namit mo ba yung objective na nilagay mo dyan. Right? Napakahalaga ng objectives because that will serve us our goal or our uh, motives on what we want to achieve after our lesson. Right? So, kaila, napakaano din kasi pinipili din yung mga word na gagamitin, di ba? Sa paggawa ng objective. So, Kailangan maging maingat din, maging selective kayo sa words na gagamitin sa paglagay ng objective. And also, do not forget the, yung nilalagay sa end part ng, ano, 
ng objective, ito. Makikita nyo to sa, yan, curriculum guide, yan. Sa curriculum guide, dun nyo ito makikita. So, kailangan-kailangan to, teachers, kasi tinitingnan to ng nag-rate sa inyo. Yan. So, may, sa ano ko din is, I have a value focus. Yung value focus ko is practice drinking right amount of water. Then, prerequisite concepts and skills under objective 2. I put there, concept of capacity measure, converting letter to milliliters. So, here. Yung unang part ng lesson plan, sa lesson plan pala, ilagyan mo na ng detailed lesson plan in math, kung anong subject in anong grade, and then time, napakahalaga nito, day, date, and then human numeral 1, objective. So, yun. Human numeral, human numeral 2 na tayo. Which is subject matter. So, subject matter under nito is topic. Yung topic ko. Yung topic nyo na napili. And then, the re reference. Kailangan ilagay nyo yan. And then, the materials. Yung mga gagamitin yung materials sa demo. And then, yung code. Yung sinasabi ko sa inyo guys na code sa curriculum guide nyo yan makukuha. And then, human numeral 3, instructional procedures. Ito na yung flow ng lesson nyo. Yung flow ng lesson. So, nahahati ito sa dalawa. Teacher's activity and pupil's activity. So, under human numeral 3, letter E, preliminary activities. Number 1, greetings. Number 2, prayer. Number 3, checking of attendance. Number 4, checking of assignments. Number 5, energizer. Greetings. Example ng greetings is good morning class. And then, yung response ng student is good morning, ma'am. Prayer. Kailangan mag-ask ka ng student na mag-volunteer sa pag-lead ng prayer. That is the proper. And then, number three is checking of attendance. Just simply ask who are absent today. And then, how was your day? After that, how was your day? Is it good so far? Yan, mga ganyan. Under yan sa checking of attendance. Number four is checking of assignment. It is very important na tanungin mo sila about sa assignment. Like, do you have an assignment class? Yan, yung, yung, at saka, you need to instruct them if they had an assignment, you need to instruct them that pass your assignments to the front. Number five is energizer. Energizer any, you can think of something that you, that you can use as an energizer. So, number six is recall the classroom rules. In my case, I wrote um, five classroom rules. It is very important para maging organized yung, um, yung teaching mo. So, here, what I put there is, be, number one is be positive. Number two is be polite. Number three is be respectful of your classmates and teachers. Number four is be productive. Number five is be prepared. So, you need to explain these rules to them. So, during my time, I explain these rules to my students. Number seven is drill. Drill is something to do, has something to do with your new lesson. Drill. Yan. So here, so kung elementary teacher ka, it is very important to use e pictures. Napaka-important din gumamit ng picture since elementary teacher ka. So I'd like to thank to my to the one who suggested me to use e um, to use e pictures in this part. My uh, yung ano, yung yung idea na to is um, nakuha ko to or suggestion to ng top 10 sa board exam. Yan. So, thank you, sir. So, yan. So, napakahalaga kasi ng picture pag sa elementary kasi catchy siya masyado. Parang, ano ba, um, namumotivate sila na makinig or tumingin yan. So, I use pictures here. 
And then next is review. What is review? Yung may review, number 8 is review. Yung sort of recalling the past lesson. Yan. So, what, paano nga ba? Paano ba gawin sa review na? During, ano, um, yeah, magtanong ka lang. But, kapag sorry, ganyan. Then, yung previous lesson. Number 9 is motivation. Think of something. Motivation ito yung pinaka- dapat yung motivation connected din. Guys, during my time, yung pinaka mali ng karamihan ng practice teacher is that gumagamit sila ng motivation na hindi connected sa topic. So, yung na, ba, bakit nga ba? Napakahalaga na yung motivation mo is connected sa topic mo. Bakit? Kasi ito yung parang way na magko-connect sa mga student mo doon sa topic nyo, sa panibagong topic nyo, right? So, kailangan may sense din yung motivation na gagamitin nyo. Hindi lang basta-basta kung ano yung maisip nyo. Hindi ganyan. Dapat yung motivation na pipiliin nyo or nagagamitin nyo, connected doon sa topic nyo. So, here. Ito yung pinaka-motivation ko. Yan. So, kailangan sa motivation mo kung story man yan or problem kailangan with pictures di ba para para ma ano ma ma touch mo yung attention ng mga students mo so yan during my time i use pictures yung pictures na gumagalaw yan yun yung ginamit ko kasi ano solving problem naman to so yun yun yung ginamit ko So, number, letter B, developmental activities. Under that, number one is presentation. Presentation yan. More on pictures. Pictures, yan. Gumamit din ako ng pictures para mas maintindihan ng mga students. Yan. Yung illustration. Na illustration ako dyan. Diba problem and then illustration. In order for them to understand easily. Yan. Para makakop up sila kung ano yung sinasabi ko. Yan. So, next that, next to that is activity. Yan. Activity is yung kailangan. Ito. Ito yung pinaka. Kailangan may instruction kay May sinet kang standard. So, ito yung ginawa ko. I will divide you into four groups. Count of one to four. Group one will occupy the first and second row. Group to stay in the third and fourth row. Group three, first row and second row in the side. And group four occupy the third row and fourth row in the side. I will give you a cartolina with written problem inside. Write your answers in a paper. But in answering, all the members in each group must hold. Observe silence. And right after the that, choose one representative to present your output. You only have two minutes to do it. So, yan. Tinitingnan din ito, teachers, na mga nag-write sa inyo kung meron ba kayong standard rules na pinapalo and then clear ba yan sa mga estudyante nyo. So, yan. Kailangan magkaroon. So, yun ito, do not forget to put an standard rules in your activity. In order for your student to easily understand the instruction. So, that's it. So, yung direction, yan. And then, number three is analysis. This is the formal lesson. Ito na yung pinaka-lesson na part. Kaya, so, kailangan kay, ayusin nyo yung pag ano dito. Kasi ito na yung pinaka-lesson. Lesson na to, ha? Ito yung lesson. mag explain ka na dito. Ipapaliwanag mo na yung lesson. Yung abstraction. Yung paglalahat. Yan. Again, Since we are already in the modern world, so kailangan student-centered, not teacher-centered. Naintindihan? Kailangan yung lesson plan yung teachers, teacher-centered, um, learner-centered, not teacher-centered. Yan. Kasi, in the, nasa progressivism na tayo. So, it's learner-centered. Do not forget. Kailangan yung lesson plan nyo, learner-centered, not teacher-centered. Yan. Kasi tinitingnan yung flow ng lesson plan nyo ng mga mag-rate sa inyo. So, kailangan i-observe nyo yan. Application. Kailangan may application yung lesson mo in order for you to know if your student really learned from your lesson. 
Right? So, kailangan may application. Next is, next part is the evaluation. So, since sa, sa application, kung naintindihan na, nakita mo naman, okay, yung performance ng mga students mo, it's the time for you to give an evaluation or ito na yung quiz nila. Quiz. So, kailangan din ga, teachers, yung direction, kailangan brief lang, pero malinaw. Tinitingnan din ito na nag-re-rate sa inyo. Yan. Napakakalaga niyan. So, during my time, the direction that I had give is read and analyze the problems carefully and solve it. Choose your answers from the full of words. Yan. Brief lang siya, pero malinaw. Naiintindihan. And then, after ng direction na yan, ang naipiliwanag niyo na, it will not just end there. So, yung gagawin nyo is magba, ma, baba, magbabasa kayo ng isang problem hindi din ipapaliwanag sa kanila din mag example just like what I did before so binasa ko yung isang problem number number one problem example Everson drinks 4,000 milliliters of water a day how many letters did he drink in a day? Uh, so Everson daw uminom ng 4,000 ml of water sa isang araw Ilang letro daw ang iniinom niya sa isang araw? Litro yung hinihingi. Anin ba dito yung tamang sagot? It letters or four letters? If you think the correct answer is it letters, choose it letters. Yan. So that's it. Then, pagtapos na silang sumagot, okay na sila, nakapag-submit na lahat. It's time for you to give an assignment. Assignment also kailangan brief and clear ang instruction. Yan. So, bakit? Ano ba yung kahalagahan ng assignment? It's just um, parang extension to or para magkaroon sila ng um, advanced knowledge sa susunod na no, susunod na lesson. That's it. So, yun. Kailangan. Ano ba yung ano ko? So, sana Again, kailangan yung lesson plan nyo, yung objective, okay yung pagkakagawa, maging selective. Selective kayo sa objective nyo, na sa mga words na ginagamit nyo sa objective, and then yung parts, kailangan ma-master nyo, alam nyo yung parts ng lesson plan, tinitingnan yan ng mag rate and then paano nyo i-deliver yung lesson, and then yung mga activities. Yan. Kailangan yan. So, ano ba yung, ano, yung reality talaga sa demonstration, sa demo, sa DepEd Ranking? Actually, teachers, wala kayong students. mag imagine lang kayo. So, di ba? It's a, it's a more, it's too hard to demo or to teach without um, it's hard to it's hard to teach knowing the fact that there is no students mag imagine ka lang dito teacher so pero at saka yung makikinig lang sa'yo is yung mag sa inyo but kailangan yung isipin nyo meron kayong estudyante dapat yung yung ma-deliver niyo ng maayos yung parang may student kayo dapat naiintindihan ng mga estudyante ganyan so overall pag perfect yung lesson plan mo yung demo mo you'll automatically get a perfect points 15 points sa demo teacher so sa mga mag-undergo ng DPD ranking congratulations in advance and i hope this video could help you